It's Wednesday, May 15th, 2013, and this is the Energy Education Podcast. I'm Kevin Hurley. Today, we're talking about some breaking news regarding the situation at Southern California Edison's San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant. Several years ago, Southern California Edison made significant changes to their steam generators. Rather than replacing the old equipment with exactly the same part, Edison made the decision to experiment with new equipment that has never before been tested. While this type of experimentation is not unheard of, any plant operator who does it is legally required to notify the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and follow a strict process known as 50.59, which requires public input. As you probably know by now, Edison made these changes but avoided the process that would allow the public to weigh in. Those changes resulted not only in an accidental release of radiation at the San Onofre plant, but also with intervening group Friends of the Earth filing a petition asking the NRC to do something about it. Well, this past Monday, the NRC's Atomic Safety and Licensing Board came back with a decision. Joining us to talk about that decision are Arnie and Maggie Gunderson. Arnie and Maggie, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kevin. Really glad to be here. All right, Kevin. So today we're talking about a recent decision made by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Atomic Safety Licensing Board, the ASLB. And this relates to the San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant, an issue that's been going on for years now, where the operator of the San Onofre plant, Southern California Edison Limited Liability Corporation or subsidiary of the Edison Company, did not follow the proper procedure for making equipment changes in their plant several years ago. Now, Arnie, you've been talking about this for years, and some big news coming out of the NRC's ASLB today. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, it really is breaking breaking news, and it's really important about the, the public has a right to know, and that's what the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's uh, Atomic Safety and Licensing Board said. About a year ago, in June of last year, Friends of the Earth asked the Nuclear Regulatory Commission for hearings about the license on San Onofre. Well, the commission, the five commissioners, decided to ask an Atomic Safety and Licensing Board, that's three judges, to make a decision whether or not one was uh, required. Well, just Monday, the board made its recommendation, and it was unanimous that Friends of the Earth was right, that the public has a right to know, and that before the San Onofre reactor starts back up, there has to be public hearings. Arnie, isn't that true that the three-member panel concluded that if the operator, Edison, was allowed to restart San Onofre, the plant would be operating beyond the scope of its existing license? Yeah, that's exactly what they said. They said two other things that are really important uh, for Fairwind's work. They're saying that to operate the plant going forward would be an experiment. That's their word. They said it was an experiment. And the other thing they said is that the changes in the plant from back in 04, 05, 06, when the old steam generators were there to these new steam generators were really, really significant and should have been evaluated more thoroughly by the NRC. Now, that word experiment is critical because what the law says is that if you do an experiment in a nuclear reactor, you have to get the public's input through a public hearing process before you do the experiment. So we've got an Atomic Safety and Licensing Board now who unanimously agreed with Friends of the Earth that Edison was going to do an experiment on the people of Southern California. And before they're allowed to do that experiment, they have to seek a public license. So this story has been unfolding for quite a while now. And for our new listeners, I think it's important that they understand that this whole thing really is about the fact that the public wasn't involved. San Onofre made changes to their steam generators. Those changes involved replacing equipment for equipment that had never been used before. So that's what you're talking about when you say experiment. Yeah, this whole issue is about the public's right to know. The um, nuclear industry and the NRC have developed a process to keep the public out They have a law, and it's called 10 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, 50, paragraph 59. And that allows power plants to make small changes without having to revise their license. But the nuclear industry has distorted that law, and now you can have enormous changes. 
and the NRC looks the other way and lets enormous changes get made. The statute specifically says in the 50.59 process that there has to be a like-for-like replacement. So Edison could have replaced the exact same guts of the steam generator for the replacement steam generator and been fine. But they went outside the design of the original generator, and they had no engineering facts upon which to base the changes they made, and no one in the NRC or the public examined those changes. And the ratepayers were stuck with an $800 million boondoggle of two replacement generators that have failed, and the ratepayers of Southern California have had to pay for this. Yeah, let me just touch on that public right to know thing. That Back in '04, Edison decided the public didn't have a right to know. And what they did was they, they told Mitsubishi, the people who are making this generator, they told them the answer. The answer was that when you do your 5059 analysis, you are going to determine that the public has no right to know. Well, son of a gun, that's exactly the conclusion Mitsubishi came to. So no one in the public had any knowledge of the massive modifications to the steam generator until it broke. And it broke in 2012, in January 2012, and has been shut down now for 15 months, all because almost a decade earlier, Edison didn't want a public licensing process. It didn't want the public to know how much it was modifying the steam generator. But it certainly wanted to use the public's money. So what you're saying then is when this project went out to bid, this project went out to several contractors, including Mitsubishi, but before it went out, Southern California Edison had already determined that whatever proposals came back from these contractors could not require that public input be had. So it was predetermined that the public would be disenfranchised from this whole process. Yeah, what happened was a really conscientious whistleblower inside San Onofre sent Friends of the Earth the the proposal. And in the proposal, Edison says, here's the answer, guys. The public is going to be disenfranchised, and you're going to reach this conclusion. So in 04, Edison decided that the public didn't have the right to know, and their contractor in 09 came to the exact same conclusion they were required to reach in the contract. Well, Arnie and Maggie, it seems like you've all been talking about this issue for a very long time now. You've put out several reports. I know you were in a video where you were standing on the beach in front of San Onofre explaining, giving a technical demonstration on the tube problems over a year now, I believe. When did this first start? And can you tell me a little bit about your experience kind of moving through this issue from the beginning? Yeah, back in March of 2012, a year ago, We were approached by Friends of the Earth to take a look at this and try to determine what caused the the problems at San Onofre. Well, we put out five reports and the video that's on the site, the videos from April of last year, explaining exactly what the problem was. And our reports were right. We were attacked pretty viciously by the nuclear industry in the process. But our reports were right then and they're right now and we stand by them. Well, of course, now the Atomic Safety Licensing Board has confirmed that your reports were right, no? Yes, they have. And what's really interesting in this whole process is that a powerful corporation like Edison and the Nuclear Energy Institute, the lobbying arm of the nuclear industry, can libel and slander and try and shut down a corporation like ours, Fairwinds Associates Incorporated, by lying right in the public arena. For example, last spring, Jennifer Manfrey, the spokesperson for Edison, was on uh, public television in California. And she taught, this is a quote from public television and from the OC Register. And it says, Edison challenged Gunderson's knowledge and credibility, saying he is a high school math and science teacher with a degree in nuclear engineering but has no first-hand knowledge about problems being investigated in San Onofre steam generators. And she's, she claimed, Jennifer Manfrey claimed, nuclear plants have backups and backups and backups. And he's really doing a big disservice to the men and women who work on the systems every day. The plant was shut down because the systems work, and he doesn't credit that. If Edison had 
done what it was supposed to do back in the beginning in 2004, then none of this would have happened. The right replacement steam generators would have been put in and the plants would continue to operate reliably and safely. Was there a safety risk? Yes, there was a significant safety risk to the 8 million people in that area of Southern California. And was there radiation release? Yes. Was it minor? Yes. But it could have been so much more. And the tubes have failed, and they have failed because Edison chose to benefit its bottom line. It used public ratepayers' money to complete an experiment, and they want to continue an experiment. And so I find Edison and Manfrey's comments just entirely libelous and, and total slander in going after Fairwinds and Arnie's reputation. Arnie was a senior vice president of a nuclear firm. He had 450 employees reporting to him. He's run all kinds of engineering divisions. He has 40 years in the industry doing analysis and has the engineering background as well as the reactor operator's license. I find it sad that a corporation like Edison would be so fearful of public review of their engineering process, they would have to stoop to libel and slander. You know, the, the other term for this is shooting the messenger. And that's exactly what Manfrey tried to do. Here she says, I'm a high school math teacher. In fact, I teach math at the college level one day a week and with no experience in the nuclear industry. I, I think I've had a, was a senior vice president, Jennifer. And the other part of it is that I had no experience. The group that I ran created the modern steam generator nozzle dam. We had the patent on the modern steam generator nozzle dam. So for her to claim that I have no experience on steam generators and no nuclear experience whatsoever, it, it's just a, a, a typical attack, shooting the messenger rather than facing the fact that they're trying to keep the public out of a process that the public is intimately involved in, whether they like it or not. To me, it sounds like everyone is just doing their job. I mean, her job is as a public relations spokesperson. She has no experience in nuclear power or engineering. So by coming out and attacking you, I mean, it might be a, a low blow, but she's doing whatever they can to kind of save their faltering reputation as a company. Kevin, I think that's a great comment. I, I would call Manfrey and her ilk anti-open information activists. You know, we have environmentalists and nuclear safety advocates trying to protect public health and safety and the welfare of the whole Southern California region. And then we have anti-open information activists and lobbyists for the nuclear energy companies trying to line their pockets. And of course, they're paid. Yes, they're paid. They're paid big bucks. Better than you. Oh yeah, a lot better than we are, I'll tell you. So then one more thing on, on Jennifer Manfrey, and then we'll move on. This from her Twitter feed, and I'm quoting. She says, twice in my formal education, I got a C. Once in economics, and once in physics. Go figure. How do you figure, Maggie? Well, I just think that shows that she doesn't have any background to understand this material, to understand the huge loss of the ratepayers in $800 million in bogus charges by Edison added to the physics of how the steam generators work and how replacement steam generators should have been designed. It's, it's really sad, but it's typical of the industry. They use a lot of PR flax like this. And it's not just Edison that does this. I mean, Nuclear Energy Institute, the industry lobbying arm, has taken a step in that. They did a whole blog called Arnie Gunderson Authors, Another Shoddy Report, about this report on San Onofre, this one that was used and cited continuously in the footnotes of the ASLB decision. Go online, look at the decision. We have a link on our website. But of course, that recent San Onofre report that uh, NEI was calling shoddy was found to be absolutely correct by the NRC. Yes, that's, that's definitely true. But there's other concerns in this whole process. 
yes, a federal panel sided with the environmentalist and said that San Onofre is trying to operate beyond its existing license. But now the chairwoman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Allison McFarlane, is trying to backpedal and join with the pro-nuke commissioners in violation of an open and transparent federal process. The Atomic Safety and Licensing Board is an independent arm of the agency, and Senator Boxer has said the board's decision established, quote, a legal framework for a full public hearing before any final decision on the restart of the San Onofre nuclear power plant is made. And McFarlane, her, the chairwoman for the NRC, is saying that the NRC commission is trying to determine the best way to inform the public. She's calling the situation complex. It's not complex. So here's what happened. Edison violated the public trust and violated federal statute in the 50.59 process. And then in doing that, they have usurped 800 million or more now as the engineers sit idle and ratepayers pay for them. More than $800 million of ratepayer monies has been used for a plant that is an operating experiment. This deserves GAO oversight. I think the General Accounting Office should investigate this and investigate the NRC if they don't hold these public hearings. So now it's uh, just no more than a wait-and-see game. We have three federal judges on the ASLB who have made a ruling, who have determined that Edison did not properly follow the 5059 process, who have determined that Edison left the public out of this decision. But of course, that judgment, that finding by the ASLB, for lack of a better word, could be vetoed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the full commissioners. That's the case? That's definitely the case, and that just shows how the regulator, the NRC, is in the pocket of the industry. When the commission votes on these kinds of things, they've got to have a, a majority vote. And two commissioners always vote with the nuclear industry. So the other three commissioners have to vote in favor of the public's right to know, or else this thing can still get buried. They can still ignore their own Atomic Safety and Licensing Board judges and do what the industry wants them to do. Stay tuned and we'll see if the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is a watchdog or a lapdog. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then it'll just be business as normal until then. Arnie, Maggie, thanks for coming on. Kevin, as always, thanks for doing this show. Thanks, Kevin. Well, that about does it for this week's show. Remember, you can catch us back here next Wednesday and every Wednesday for more on what's happening in the world of nuclear news and more technical nuclear discussion. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. For Fairwinds Energy Education, I'm Kevin Hurley. Thanks for listening.